Hello, good evening. Welcome to a Monday episode of Brett's All Time Radio Show. I hope your week started off well. I hope everything's going to plan. My wife, Vicky, has got a presentation she's been doing in work. So she's going to be doing that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And she's been absolutely flat out with it. But she is, can I just tell you, my wife, Vicky, is absolutely brilliant. Anything she puts her hand to, she is absolutely brilliant at it. So she's going to nail it. She's going to nail the next three days. It's going to be brilliant. And it's going to be another feather in her cap. So we're very proud of her in the in the Brett's Autumn Radio Show household. Lola's behind me. She's proud as well. Although she's not showing it right now because she's fast asleep. Thanks for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our Nighttime Podcast. Welcome to another episode. Do not forget, I'd really appreciate it if you check out our Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you give us a follow, oh well, that would be just brilliant. Also, we've got our supporter page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Time now for an absolutely brilliant, brilliant episode of Hancock's Half Hour. It's episode three of Series 6. This one is called The Last Bus Home, and it's just fantastic. We present Tony Hancock, Sidney James, and Bill Kerr in... Hancock's Half Hour. How much further is the bus stop, Tub? Just round the corner. Stop moaning. Well, why didn't we get on at the stop outside the pictures? Because it's tenpence from there, that's why. <laughs> it's only eightpence from here. I'm not paying tuppence for a couple hundred yards. That's sixpence we've saved. Enough for two cups of tea in Fred's cafe. But there's three of us. Well, you can have a drop in my saucer. <laughs> I don't see why we had to come all this way just to go to the pictures. Because I've seen them all in Cheam. You forget I'm a six times a week man. There's only three cinemas in East Cheam. The Plaza, same film all the week. The Golden Dome, six days a week. Change on Sundays. And the Flea Pit, Sun to Wed, Thurs to Sat. <laughs> it's only five programmes. Doesn't matter how you work it, you've got to get on the bus for the sixth one. Well, why didn't we go up to London? Could have got two programmes in up there. <coughs> Cartoon show. Then round the corner for Nudist Paradise and round the world with nothing on. <laughs> Do you seriously expect me to travel all the way up to town to see that sort of thing? When for one and tenpence any part of the house, we've just seen Street of Shame and Drag Strip Girl. <laughs> Finer double feature we haven't had round here for years. Here we are, here's the bus stop. How long have we got to wait for the bus? Well, there's a timetable on the pole. Have a look. Ask that boy with the long hair to lean off it. Not me. That's not a watch chain he's swinging. <laughs> ah, well, it won't be long. The last one back to Team Garage is about 11.15, I think. We've got about ten minutes. Supposing we don't get on it. Well, of course we'll get on it. They come along empty at this time of night. There's a long queue. Let's walk back to the pictures. We stand more chance of getting on there. No. Supposing it comes along when we're halfway between the stops. You know I can't run. Not with these steel tips on. <laughs> Slide all over the road. We'll stay here. Have you got the fare money, Bill? I told you to put it in your glove. Yeah. Well, let me get the tickets this time. No. Oh, go on. You got them coming. No, I'm getting the tickets. Well, can I hold them when you get them? No. I want to see if the numbers add up to 21. You're not having them. You chew them all up. And when the inspector gets on, we've had it. I might let you have them when we get off the bus. Where are you going to put them, then? In the band of me hat. I've seen people do it, and it looks very good. <laughs> looks as though you're used to riding on buses when you do that. <laughs> Another thing, don't start complaining if you can't get the front seat. And don't draw faces on the windows with your finger. It's most embarrassing. Apart from the fact that I'm fed up with Hitler, it's the only one you can do. I can do a baby with one hair sticking up at the top. Well, don't. Ah, uh, why don't you two shut up? You're like a couple of kids. You're in a bad mood, aren't you? Well, I wanted to go and see... Yeah, well, yes, we know what you wanted to go and see. You can go and see it by yourself. I've no wish to see nudist paradise and around the world with nothing on. I shouldn't think so. You've seen it three times. <laughs> Who's asking you to poke your nose in? Well, no one, but... Then mind your own business. 
It was pure coincidence that I saw them three times. It just happened to be raining, and I went into the first cinema I saw, and I got inside to my utter amazement. I... <laughs> I found they were showing these, these nudist things. Three times this happened. Well, it so happened that the girl in the ticket box smiled at me and I thought I was onto a good thing, so I went again. <laughs> Just didn't work out, that's all. What happened then? How do I know what happened? I think the manager fancied her or something, I don't know. Can't compete with these flash alleys and dinner jackets and little moustaches. <laughs> Not when they got photographs of themselves hanging up in the foyer, shaking hands with the royalty. <laughs> oh, blimey, how I hate hanging about in the cold waiting for the bus. Where is it? Not due yet. You are a misery, aren't you? Well, my feet are cold. Well, you shouldn't wear those nylon socks. I told you to get a wool mixture. They don't make the wool ones flashy enough. I like flashy clocks up the sides. They look horrible. Pink's not your colour for a start. <laughs> they are not pink. It's called Mediterranean mauve. It's the latest colour from Italy, the man said. Italy, Birmingham they came from. They can sell you anything, can't they? I can't understand you. For a man who's so shrewd in business matters, you're a right mug the minute you walk into a clothes shop. They see you coming. Nylon socks, two-tone Italian winkle pickers. <laughs> Frank Sinatra hats. What a mess you look. Oh, I don't know. I think I look pretty sharp. Sharp? It's an education to walk behind you. <laughs> if you could have only heard the comments as you walked up the balcony stairs tonight. Every time your trouser legs went up and those horrible socks poked out, a buzz went round the cinema. That was admiration, that was. You're just dead jealous because you can't dress, that's all. <laughs> Me? Can't dress? Oh, well, of course, now you're just being ridiculous. I used to be a sensation in the five-guinea ring at Cheltenham. Binoculars, British warm, chucker boots and jeans. <laughs> Even the horses used to turn and look. Hey, here's the bus coming. Where, where, where? 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 Oh, no. No, it's turned off. Must have been a lorry. Why don't you keep your eyes open, raising our hopes like that? Keep quiet until you can see the whites of its numbers. Why don't they put sides on these bus shelters? Oh, blimey, how that wind whistles through. Oh, honestly, you're a right drag, you are. You haven't stopped moaning since we left home. I'm not going out with you anymore. You spoil the whole evening. But well, we shouldn't have come all this way out. Takes the old shine off it when you've got to wait hours for a bus home. They only run every half hour. They're bringing us right out here in the wilds. You're trying to start a row, aren't you? You've been after one all night, haven't you? Yes, I have. I see. You are blaming me. Yes, I am. Good, good. Good, now I know where I stand. I know where I stand. That's cleared the air a bit. And what are you going to do about it? Never you mind. <laughs> now I know where I stand. That's all I want to know. That's all I'm interested in. All right, then. Come on, then. What about it? No, 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 no. <laughs> that's all right. As long as I know where I stand, that's all. See that? He's going to sulk now. No, no, I'm not. I know where I am now. A stab in the back. Most enjoyable. <laughs> Starts up as a nice evening at the pictures and it finishes up as a punch-up at the bus stop. <laughs> Very nice. Friendship, that is. I am not punching you up. Get your hand off my shoulder. <laughs> there, there. Who are you pushing? I am not pushing anybody. Just get your hand off my shoulder. <laughs> are you threatening me? Take it how you like. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to step out into the curb. Suits me as long as I know where I stand. <laughs> all right, we'll get it over with once and for all. Certainly, that suits me. Bill, hold my bowler. <laughs> now then, you've asked for this. I'm ready. I've been wanting to poke you one all night. <laughs> well, now's your chance then. Come on then. Now I know where I stand. <laughs> That's different. Now I know. Right. Put your fists up. They're up. Come on, then. Make the first move. Go on. I'm going to. Well, come on, then. I'm waiting. So am I. All right, then. 
Come on, make one move. Just touch me once, that's all. It'll be a lot. Come on, come on. All right, then. Come on, then. Hello, hey, hey, watch it. Get back there, watch. I love you. You want to fight, then? Yes, I do, yes. Well, come on, then. All right, then. There's a bus coming. Where, where, where? where? <laughs> oh, no, no, it was another lorry. <laughs> well, it, it looked like a bus. It had the same shape bonnet. You buffoon. <laughs> Give me my bowler back. I said, hold it, not put it on. You finished the fight, then? Yes, we have. Who won? Mind your own business. It was a draw. We didn't touch each other. We didn't have to. We're two intelligent men. We don't have to resort to violence. <laughs> We've grown out of the primitive means of settling quarrels. And any more cheek and you'll get a clip round the ear hole. <laughs> you'll also get one from me. I haven't done anything. Yes, well, just watch it then, that's all. Yeah, watch it. Mm. Go by ourselves next week, Sid. Leave him behind, eh? Yeah, he's a dead lumber, isn't he? Ah, for crying out loud, how much longer is this bus going to be? He is a bit late, isn't he? Still, he'll be belting along when he gets here. We'll soon be home. I hope so. I'm cold, I'm hungry, and I want to go to bed. I am not coming right out here to go to the pictures again. Oh, come on, Sid. Don't keep on, mate. I'm the one who should be cold. You've got more on than I have. I mean, these vests with holes weren't made for nights like these. <laughs> well, it's all right for you. You've got all that fat to keep you warm. And now, come on, Sid, you're being personal now, aren't you? I mean, there's, there's no need for that, old man. Well, it's true, isn't it? It is not true. Oh, yes, it is. Covered in blubber, you are. Are you looking for a fight? <laughs> I don't mind. Would you care to step out onto the curb again? Certainly. <laughs> and this time I'm really going to do you. Come on, then, let's have you, hey, then. There's a bus coming. Oh, shut up. Yes, there is. There's a bus coming. Lorries don't have lights upstairs, do they? He's right. It is the bus. Hooray, it's the bus. It's the bus. <laughs> All right, all right. Anybody think it was Wells Fargo coming through the way he's created? <laughs> well, blimey, it's about time. Well, I told you it wouldn't be long. We'll be home in half an hour. Now, don't forget, William, if we're separated, tell the man I'm upstairs with the money. Ah, oh, here we are. Come along there, both sides on. Are we along there? We want to get home tonight. So do we. We've been here a quarter of an hour. Well, I can't help that, mate. I don't draw the schedules up. Come along, then. Two at a time, like they are. All aboard before the flood. <laughs> yeah, right little comic, isn't he? Yeah, get back in the queue now. Three more inside. One, two, three. Five upstairs. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Heads to look. Thank you. Full up. Wait a minute. What about us? You heard what I said. Full up. Yes, but stone me, there's only three of us. Well, that's three too many, isn't it, mate? I'm full up. But this is the last bus, isn't it? No, no, no. There's another one coming up behind. Oh, good. What time? Half past six in the morning. <laughs> now, let go of that rail. There's a good little fella. I refuse. Do you want to be dragged along the high street? Well, no. Then let go of the rail. You're not coming up here. I know my rights. This is the last bus. I demand you take us home. You'll get my ticket machine right across your knuckles if you don't let go. We've got a long way to go. Just take me, then. Leave the other two and I'll pay your treble fare. There you are. There you are. Two shillings for an eightpenny ride. Are you going to let go? No. I'm going to ding me bell. I shall write to the Minister of Transport about this. Well, you do that, matey. He might send out a bus to pick you up. <laughs> Hold tight. Have your fares ready there, flea. Bureaucrat. Little dictator. Hope you get a puncture. I got your number. <laughs> He could have squeezed us in. We could have sat under the stairs till somebody got a... Well, what are you looking at me like that for? You great, dozy, fat, stupid idiot. Yeah. You keep out of this. <laughs> Don't get on at the pictures. We saved tuppence if we walked down to the next stop. Now we can't get home. I hope you're satisfied. It wasn't my fault. I can't help it if the bus was full up. It was your stupid idea to come traipsing all this way out. Now look where we are. Freezing, perishing, cold, a dirty great gale blowing through our ear holes and we're stranded. Miles from anywhere. Oh, don't be such a misery. We'll step out. We'll soon be home. Walk? It'll take us hours. I'm not walking all that way. It'll do us good. You could do with the exercise. If we put our best foot forward and a few marching songs, we'll be home in no time. Come on, it's a nice night for it. It should be most enjoyable. The old Harry Lauder, eh? Go. 
Keep right on oh, to no. the end of the road. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Well, we can't stop under this tree all night. I'm not getting out in this weather. Come on, the rain's bound to stop in a minute. You have been saying that for the last hour and a half. I'll tell you what, Bill can take off his coat and we'll put it over our heads and we'll keep dry. What about me? What about you? Well, I'll get wet if I haven't got my coat on. But it's better for one to get wet than all three of us. Don't be so selfish. <laughs> take your coat off. No, I'm not walking along the road in my shirt sleeves. Well, you can wear my bowler hat. I'm not taking my coat off. I'll get pneumonia. No, oh, you are an old woman. Here, here. There's a car coming. I say there, I wonder if you could help me. Go on, Bill, quick. Go and ask him where he's going. Why don't you go and ask him? Because it's raining. Go on, hurry up. Oh, all right. It's a posh car, isn't it? Yeah. We'd soon be home in that. Oh, yeah. He's driving off. What a shame. Thought it might be all right there. Thanks for the audition, Will. <laughs> well, what? Well, what did he want? What did he want? Oh, oh, you mean him and the car? No, the bloke on the elephant. <laughs> Who do you think I mean? Well, what about him? Well, what did he want? Oh, he, he wanted to know the way to East Chim, so I told him. What do you mean you told him? Didn't you ask him for a lift? No, you didn't say to ask him for a lift. You just said go and see where he's going. <sighs> so help me, I'll pulverise him. Hold me back, Sid. I can't be responsible for my accident. I'll do him an injury. Oh, no, no, no. Now, don't hit me. I haven't done Control anything. Control yourself, Hancock. Leave him alone. Take your hands off Leave me. Leave him alone. Don't touch him. Come here, son. That's better. Now, don't let me do it. I can hurt him twice as much as you can. Oh, no, no. Don't hit me. No, leave him alone. It's not worth it. He wouldn't feel it anyway. <laughs> hey, look at that lightning. Oh, yes. Yes, very pretty. Highly electrical. It's getting worse. What are we going to do? We'll just have to stay under the tree until it stops. Oh, dear. It's dangerous to stay under a tree when there's lightning about. Very dangerous indeed. Only if it's the highest tree around. This is only a little one. My uncle was standing under a little tree in a thunderstorm once. He said the same thing. Then all of a sudden, the lightning struck wallop. Split the tree right in half. And I suppose your uncle was killed? Oh, no, no. Well, there you are, then. The six people with him were, though. <laughs> Why do you have to keep putting the mockers on things? <laughs> I'm not standing under a tree with you again. He's right, you know. Oh, don't you start. Well, he is right. It is dangerous. I read about it. Why should you worry you're wearing crepe soles? <laughs> you're not, though. No, I'm not, am I? Steel tips. <laughs> I'll have had it, won't I? Out like a light. They'll find me in the morning with smoke coming out of my boots. <laughs> what else can we do? Well, we could go back to the high street and get in the shop doorway. But that's a hundred yards down the road. Well, we could run. Wouldn't take long. No, no, that's going back. We want to go the other way or we'll never get home. No, I, I vote we take a chance and stay here. Sorry, mate, we're going. Go on. Wait for me, wait for me! Look at me. Soaking wet. All the stretch has gone out of my braces. <laughs> Still will be all right now. It's much drier in here than under the tree. Here, here. There's some very, very good watches in this window, ain't there? Oh, yes. Trust you to pick a jeweler's shop. Get that diamond ring of yours away from that window. I've no desire to belt up the high street with an alarm bell going. <laughs> well, at least it's nice to be in out of the rain. Yes, most comfortable. Keeps the wind off, too. Look at that rain bouncing off the pavement. It's like a monsoon. Look at it. I wouldn't like to be out in that. All right, come on, move along there. Get out of that shop doorway. Oh, good evening, Constable. I'm just sheltering from the rain. Oh, shelter somewhere else. I don't like people hanging around shop doorways on my beat. I saw you come running down the street to this doorway. Very suspicious you was acting. You don't like teddy boys in our area, so up it. 
teddy boy? Since when has a bowler hat been the mark of a teddy boy? Now, come along, push off. Look, you can't turn us out on a night like this. We're doing no harm. There's hostels for tramps not you. Why don't you use them? We are not tramps. I don't like the look of this. I think I shall take some particulars. Where do you come from? East Cheam. We're trying to get back there. But East Cheam's in the other direction. Why do you run this way? Because there are no shops the other way. Oh, so you're after the shops. We're not after the shops, only to shelter in. Now, come on, clear it off. Think yourself lucky I haven't run you in. And don't let me catch you in any of these shops again. Well, what about the rain? It's all right for you in your big boots, your cape and your great helmet. We'd be drowned before we went 50 yards. That's your lookout. Shouldn't be out in a night like this. It wasn't a night like this when we came out. Don't argue with me. Move on. We're going. You'll hear more about this, my good man. The Lord High Sheriff of the County will get a postcard from me tomorrow. Come, gentlemen. Heads down, collars up. Well, at least the rain stopped. No, it hasn't. The wind's blowing so hard it can't land, that's all. <laughs> Where are we? I don't know. I'm never going to the pictures again. Never, never again. Oh, don't keep saying that. Well, it's half past two in the morning. It's soaking wet and we don't know where we are. The world's an inhospitable place sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much for that pearl of profundity. <laughs> I can't understand it. We've been walking far longer than an eight-penny bus ride. Are we still on the main road? I don't think so. I mean, your feet shouldn't sink into a main road, surely. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Here's a milestone. Brighton, 43 miles. East Cheam, three and a half. Wow, we're going in the right direction anyway. Now, oh, come on, then. Best foot forward. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. I recognise this place. I've been here before. Yeah, now I know. I used to court a bird who lived out this way. Yeah, I recognise the air raid shelter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, they've bricked up the door. <laughs> Still, it doesn't matter. She's married now, anyway. Still, I know where we are. Well, so do we now. Three and a half miles to go. Come on. No, no, wait a minute. You see, I know a shortcut. <laughs> Pardon? I know a shortcut across the fields. It brings us right out to the hand and racket. Knocks about half an hour off the walk. I see. So you know a shortcut? Yeah. Across the fields? Yeah. That knocks half an hour off the journey? Yeah. My intellect tells me to ignore him because he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and wouldn't know a shortcut from a hole in the ground. <laughs> but my feet tell me to take a chance because they hurt. And they want to get home to a bowl of hot water. And furthermore, if I don't go, they will. So lead on, McCurr. Well, we're lost. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not in the least bit surprised. You didn't really know a shortcut, did you? Well, I thought I did. It looked the same air raid shelter where I used to see Phyllis. Let's face it, knowing your courting habits, you could be confused with any one of a dozen air raid shelters in South London. It's a quarter past three... And there's nothing around here for miles except fields. Still, it's pretty, though, isn't it? <laughs> How can it rain non-stop for four and a half hours? Because we're out in it, that's why. We should have brought a tent with us. Oh, now, that's very careless of me. I forgot to bring it. <laughs> I always take a tent with me when I go to the pictures. <laughs> there's one racing certainty. You'll always find me there with a pack on my back and a stove in my hand. <laughs> Now, now, Sid, don't be sarcastic. Well, he gets up my nose. <laughs> it's your fault we went to the pictures and it's his fault we're lost. I haven't done a thing and it's me who's suffering. Oh, come now, Sidney, we're all in the same boat. I wish we had one. I've got enough water in my boots to float it. <laughs> oh, never mind, Sid. When this is all over, I expect we'd all look back on it and laugh about it. Don't be a twit. <laughs> I'm not being a twit. You know, I've been thinking... What? That was a good picture we saw, wasn't it? Well, I enjoyed it. 
I particularly liked that bit where she was standing under the lamppost and he walked up to her and sloshed her. <laughs> that was a lovely touch. What, you mean the bloke with the leather jacket? Yes. Very good actor, wasn't he? Very natural. Could have been real, couldn't he? I liked the symbolic ending, didn't you? What, you mean when the end came up? <laughs> uh, well, yes, just before that, actually. <clears throat> when he walked up the road and the camera went up in the air so we could see how little he was against the surrounding world and how long the road was he had to travel up. Was that symbolic? Well, of course it was. Why? <laughs> well, it... It... It showed how little he was and, and how big everything else is and, uh, and how far we all have to go. <laughs> well, of course it was symbolic. <laughs> oh! What did it mean? <laughs> well, it meant that, that... Well, this bloke was... Well, he... How can I put it like... How should I know what he meant? I wasn't in it. Oh, Hitchcock. Yes. How are we going to get out of this field? Oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about how good the film was. Who cares about the film? That was hours ago. How can you stand in the middle of a field with rain streaming down the back of your neck and rabbit on about little blokes walking up big roads? <laughs> There is no need to lose your temper. I have every right to lose my temper. I didn't want to go and see the lousy film in the first place. If I'd gone uptown to see Nudist Paradise, I would have been home, dry and wrapped up in a nice snug bed. But now... Hey, look, look! I... What? I can see the man on the moon. Oh, well, blind. <laughs> look. But there he is, look! He's looking straight at me. Oh, no. He's gone behind a cloud. You can't blame him, can you? <laughs> Wait a minute. Of course. Now what? If he saw the moon, that means it's clearing up. The stars will be out in a minute. Oh, that's great. Now we're going to stand out in the middle of a field and count stars all night. Discuss the theory of the expanding universe, I suppose. Listen, matey, the only place that is expanding out here is the distance between us and that ramshackle cow shed we live in. Have you finished? Yes. We are not going to count them. We are going to use them to get home by. If it's quicker than walking, I don't care how we get home. Right. Now, where are we? Ah, let's see. Ah, that's the great bear up there. It doesn't look anything like a bear. It doesn't have to. It is mythology. And the mythologians were the greatest navigators in the world. <laughs> Do you realise they were in America long before Columbus? And they only had little ships, too. Legend has it that Themiscales consulted the oracle at Delphi, which replied, Look to the stars, it replied. <laughs> Look to the stars! <laughs> Which told him that the wooden walls would save Athens. And lo and behold, he knocked seven bells out of Attila the Hun. <laughs> as he was passing through the Suez Canal on his way to Baghdad to buy a carpet. <laughs> and what has that got to do with East Cheam? Well, they're the same stars. What they did for him, they can do for us. Now, that's the North Star. East Cheam lies to the West... So we go that way. Are you sure? There is no doubt in my mind at all. Forward, men! I thought I told you to get out of this doorway. Well, it's a long story, officer. Actually, we're waiting for the 6.30 bus to East Cheam. Yeah. We've been waiting seven and a half hours for it. <laughs> on and off. Well, yet it comes now. Go on and get out of this doorway. Come along now. Hurry along there. All you early risers, both sides on. Oh, it's you again. Oh, good morning. You've been waiting here all night. That has nothing to do with you. Kindly step aside and let us get on. Here, yeah. wait a minute. You're all soaking wet. That's not surprising. It's been raining all night. Well, you're not getting on this bus in that state. <laughs> you can't stop us getting on this time. There's plenty of room. Oh, I've got the comfort and well-being of my other passengers to think about. You're not making my seats all wet. I'll take it out. Now what do we do? You're not coming in this doorway. 
Well, I'll tell you what I suggest we do. We'll wait till it stops raining, and then we'll walk around and dry off. Yeah. I'll go along to the post office and draw a pound out. Yeah. Then we'll come back here and we'll be just in time... What for? The big picture. <laughs> Change your programme today. Thirst to sat. I was a teenage werewolf and blood of the vampire. <laughs> we saw the trailer last night, you remember. No, 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 not again. I'm not going. I'm... You remember that bit where he digs his teeth into her and her eyes go funny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no more. I promise we'll get on the bus right outside the cinema. It's a lovely programme. You'll enjoy it. Both exes. Come on, live a little. No, do me a favour. No, give I up that youth club. It. It's ridiculous. I haven't got this. No, no. <laughs> that was Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock with Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Warren Mitchell and Hugh Morton. Theme and incidental music composed and conducted by Wally Stott. Alan Simpson and Ray Galton wrote the script and the programme which was recorded was produced by Tom Ronald. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the brilliant Hancock's Half Hour and don't forget we'll be back mystery and adventure with Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson tomorrow night going live from 5pm GMT. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you get a minute, please do. Feel free to check that one out. And, uh, well, listen, thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. Bye.